discuss one of the hard nut subject of postgraduate common entrance test that's quantitative techniques many times aspirants have the fear of quantitative okay techniques uh, there are numerous problems and uh, they go with the uh, traditional methods of solving the problems end up with lots of time in solving the quantitative techniques and will not be having the time to do other calculations or other reasoning or english language uh, problems uh, there are many tricks that saves a lot of time for examining so in this session i'll be discussing about the many uh, tricks that will save your time and also you can utilize this time for reasoning english language and other uh, parts of the post graduate common entrance test 2020 so let's begin the session here so let us uh, have a small example equations so somebody is asking you to calculate 25 square plus 35 square plus 45 square what exactly a traditional student does so he will try to calculate 25 into 25 so he says it is okay okay uh, like this there is that right okay then they calculate okay then they say this is 625 now they are once again they calculate one more say for example 35 square so what happens here they end up in solving take you lot of time here so if i take another one here so 45 into 45 now look at now after this once again students will write here 2025 plus 1225 plus 625 So then, sum up. Now, see, you are almost taking more than one and half minute to solve this problem. So, how fast I can solve this problem? So, look, I I'll solve this. Okay, then I'll solve this. Then I'll say. Now I'll solve this. The answer is in, but I have taken less time here. Then what is the trick that I have found? So one has to remember. So look, let me teach you the trick here. The trick is. Say so I have a fifteen square. Now. Multiply five into five. That's twenty-five. So add one to it. So one, okay. That is one plus so no, okay. Two, two into one, two, two twenty-five. So I have a twenty-five square here now. What I am doing now? Right, let me write twenty-five here. Add one to the two. That is two in plus one is three. Multiply that one number with this. Three into two is six. So twenty-five square is six twenty-five. Now say thirty-five. We are having the square. Now I write twenty-five as it is. I will add one number to the three. That means come four. Four into three. That's twelve. So thirty-five square is one two two five. Now say I have forty-five square. Then it is twenty-five. Add one number to it. That is five. Four into five is twenty, so forty-five square is two zero two five. Similarly, for fifty-five square, my number is three zero two five. For sixty-five square, I'm having 
four two two five. For seventy five square, I'm having five six two five. For eighty five square, I'm having seven two two five. For ninety five square, that is twenty five. Okay, then I have a ninety. Now look at the numbers here that I could calculate in a seconds. So, what is the decoding here? What's twenty five square? I have taken this number and square this number. That is twenty five. For this number, I have added one. That is three, and I have multiplied this number with this. So three into two is six. So this is six twenty five. So this I can do it in a less than ten second. So similarly we can do it from fifteen to ninety five. So you might have wondered how others are solving the problem very quickly because they are following what is known as a trick. So you need to know. the tricks of quantitative techniques to solve the paper very quickly okay let me move to the second trick the problem number 1 a trick number 1 is you cannot apply more than 95 it is from 15 to 95 only if i have a square number say i have 32 square to calculate in the examination So this is a trick number two. I am showing it to you. Now what happens in a thirty-two square? So I will write say simply a thirty-two square is one zero two four. I didn't go with any traditional way of calculating that you people have learned in the schools like this. So two into two four, two into three is six, plus then we have three into two is six, three into three is nine, then four, then you know twelve, then now uh, okay one zero two four. You have taken lots of time, but I could solve that in a seconds. So what is the trick that I have followed in this quantitative technique? So it's very simple. So let us take one more. I'll take fifty-four square, and I'll show you. So, for example, this I consider it as A, and this I consider it as a B. And I will be solving the problem as B square, two AB, and A square. Now, how I will decode it? So, for example, B is four. So four square is sixteen. Let us take one this side. Now two into a is five, b is four. Two into five ten. Ten into four forty plus one forty one. I have taken four this side. A is five. Five square twenty five plus four twenty nine. So now without going with the traditional method, I could come to the solution. By having this number two nine one six, so I want to know a number that to be say I have forty eight square to be calculated. I'll be doing it very fast six, okay? Then two three zero four. So look at the speed I could do this and save the time in the examinations. Because I know the second trick, that is a square to a b and the b square. So once again, the decoding the problem. I have taken the two numbers and considered it as a a and b. Please do not okay, remember it is not a plus b whole square. It is a square to a b and b square formula. So I have taken the b here and has become the b square. Then two a b and the square. B is four. B square is sixteen. I have taken six and one this side. Then I have taken two into five ten. Ten into four forty. One this side. So this forty one. Four this side. 
5 square is 25 and I read 4, 29. That's all the trick number 2 that we are having. So we could say loss of time in calculating. So for example, in the examination it may be around 78 square plus 27 square minus 12 square. So with this trick, you can solve such problems in less than 15 seconds. And could save the time for reasoning or English language or any other part of the PGCET. Okay. So let us move to the next one. The trick number 3. One of the important part in the quantitative technique in the postgraduate common interest test PGCET is profit and loss problems. Many times we were asked to calculate selling prices, cost prices, gain percentage, loss percentages. Then we were asked to do, okay, the discount is given, what is the profit? If the discount is given, what is the loss? We are traditional methods, people spend lots of time in calculating uh, with the formulas and waste their time. So we are now okay, showing uh, another trick here. Let us look at the problem here. If we increase any value by X percentage, say a product is increased by X percentage price and it is de decreased by Y percentage. Assume that we are giving the discount on the product by some percentage Y, then the resulting effect in percent will be Look at the formula very simple, plus x plus y plus xy divided by the 100. It looks very simple. So let us take an example. Now look at the price of the goods is okay, marks 20% more than the real price by the shopkeeper. Okay, so the shopkeeper is charging 20 percentage more. After that, the shopkeeper allowed a discount of 10 percentage. Now, what profit or loss did the shopkeeper will get? Now, what usually people will do? They take 100 as the base price, then go for 20, then they make it as 20 percent as the 100, calculate the total amount, then allow the discount on that. Then convert that into the percentage. It consumes lots of time. So the simple trick is, now the trick is, I have a plus x plus y plus xy. Okay, and divided by the hammer. Now look at, so the problem was, it was increased by 20 percentage. And the discount was given 10 percentage, therefore it is minus. Then, now look at 20, okay this is plus, remember, into minus 10 divided by the 100. So that means this is plus 10, this is minus 2, that means plus 8. So the profit for this person is 8 percentage. Once again I repeat the problem. A shopkeeper has okay, put an extra price on the product by 20 percentage. Because of the sales promotion, he has offered the discount of the 10 percentage. So many times so now, okay, we have to calculate what is the profit. So, rather than going with the traditional calculation with the formula, we have done a simple trick. That is plus x, initial price, plus y, what is the discount offered, plus xy divided by 100. So, initial price was up by 20 percentage. A discount was given by 10 percentage. So, discount is, okay, the, we are reducing the profit, therefore it is minus. So, plus 20 minus 10 plus of plus 20 into minus 10 divided by the 100. So that is plus 10 minus 2 plus 8. So the profit is 8 percentage. So has increased the price of the product by 40 percentage. 
and has given 20% discount on this. Now our question is whether he will make able to make the profit or not. And if at all he is making the profit, what is the percentage of the profit? So our x is 40 plus okay, our discount is minus therefore 20, then plus 40 minus 20 divided by 100. So that is equal to plus 20 plus or uh, sorry minus of we have 8. Okay, this is if I take 800 divided by 100, so it is 8. So that is plus 12. So the shopkeeper even then after giving discount of 20 percentage could be able to make 12 percentage of the profit. This is a trick. So rather than using the formula, we have used the absolute shortcut that saves your time. Let us continue with uh, some other tricks here. Before I get into the profit and loss tricks, we will have some time on the fundamentals of profit and losses. What is the uh, gain? What we have? Say it is a selling price minus the cost price. Say if some shopkeeper is selling a product for 40 rupees and the cost to uh, the product is say 25, his gain is 15 rupees. But situation may not be same always. Sometimes you bought the product, but it is not selling. So you think that you you, know, you need to get rid of this inventory. So you will sell those products under the losses. So if the, okay, the cost of the product is say 60 rupees, and you sell that product to the customer at uh, 25 rupees. So that is you are losing 35 rupees for the product. Now this looks simple. That means we are clear with what is the profit and loss that we are having. But our focus is now how do I make a proper percentage? Because in the examination they will not be asking directly what is the profit and what is the loss. They will not give you the selling price is this much and cost price is this much. Whether you are getting or losing they will not ask because it is a competitive examination. Here they will ask you little tougher questions. One of the tougher question is, <coughs> what is the percentage of the profit you are having? Say, for example, they may give you the selling price of the product is 50 rupees and the cost price is 20 rupees. And they may ask you to calculate what is the gain percentage. So therefore, please do not forget in the examination to check whether they are asking the gain or the gain percentage. And most probably it is gain percentage because it is a competitive examination. Let us take the gain. Gain is 50 minus 20 that's 30 to us. So now I am coming to the formula here. My gain is 30 and multiplied by 100 and divided by the cost price, cost price is 20 to us. So if I take this to Pfizer, that is 150. Okay. So we have such questions here. So again is, uh, now we are having, so we could make the profit by 150 percentage. Similarly, we can also have a last percentage calculation. Now, say for example, selling price is 20, but cost price is 30 to us. As you know that if the cost of selling price is lesser than the cost price, we are incurring the losses. That means our loss is cost price minus the selling price, that is 30 minus 20. That's 10 rupees loss I'm having. So the loss is 10 rupee into 100, the cost price was 30. <coughs> so if you take here 100 divided by 3, that is 33.34 percentage. 
This is the last percentage we are having. Thus, in the examination they may give you the selling price and cost price. May I be asking you to find out the gain percentage and loss percentage. A quick recap of the formula. Gain is selling price minus the cost price. Loss is cost price minus selling price. And let us come to the gain percentage here. Gain percentage is gain into 100 divided by the cost price. Last percentage is loss into 100 divided by the cost price. Hope it's clear to us. Find the tricks. So what so far, whatever you have seen, these are the simple formula. But in the examination, they will twist the problem to you. In the first one, they will give the gain percentage. That is, what is the percentage of the profit earned by the retailer? And they will give the cost price. And they will ask you for the selling price. <coughs> so what usually the people will do, the, when the cost price is given, selling price is given. So let us take. So what people will do? So say 20 percentage is a profit given in the problem. And the cost per product is 20 rupees. Now what people usually do, they say they go for the profit and the put formula selling price minus the cost price. Then they try to convert this and waste a lot of time. First they try to find out you know, what is the profit, then you know. So it's a very simple trick. Therefore, now as I said, profit is 20 percentage, take the 100 plus put profit 20 percentage divided by the 100 and cost price is given to us, that's 20. <coughs> that is the 120 divided by 100 into 20. So if I take out this, 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 I have a 24 percentage. So my selling price is 24 rupees. What I have done? Rather than using the earlier formula, you know, selling price minus cost price to the profit, converting that into the profit percentage and calculating the you know, problem, I use the simple formula trick here. Trick is 100 plus the gain percentage divided by the 100 into the cost price. So this is 100 plus 20 divided by 100 into 20. So that comes to 24 plus 24 rupees. Therefore, when the profit percentage is given, that means given the gain and cost price is given. So if a problem is asked to solve the selling prices, it's a very simple formula. 100 plus the gain percentage divided by 100 into cost prices. Okay, let us move to the second one. In this problem, company has incurred the losses. As I told, maybe it is a clearance sales, end of the season sale. So the company wants to get rid of their inventory and bring the fresh stock. Even if they incur losses, they don't mind, but they would like to clear the merchandise. So in that case, last percentage is given to us, cost price is given to us. We are asked to do the selling prices. Now, what is the change in the problem here? I will be using the second of the trick here once again. For us, the last percentage is given. For us, the cost of the product is given. We have to find out the selling product, selling price. So, say for example, last incurred by selling the merchandise below the cost price is 20 percentage, last percentage. And the cost per product is say, 30 rupees. And what is the selling price? We have to find it out. Now, 100 minus the last percentage is 20 divided by 100 and into where having cost price is 30. So this becomes 80 divided by 100 into 30. That is so if I take out these numbers, that is 24. So the person has sold the product at a 24 rupees. Though he got the product at a 30 rupees. So by incurring the loss of 20 percentage. So 
the cost price is 30 but the selling price was 24 so the simple trick is i didn't go for calculating the last percentage with the earlier formulas but i used the trick here 100 minus the last percentage into 100 into the cost price now we have some trick question that comes in the pgcd so sometimes they ask you Rather than giving the selling prices, this time they give you the sales price beginning in the problem and also give the gain percentage. We are supposed to calculate what is the cost price. Once again I will repeat what I said to the session. You have given the selling prices and the profit percentage is given. They will ask us to find out what is the cost price. So we are coming here for the third trick. That is, selling price is given, gain percentage is given. I have to find out what is the cost price of the product. So now, assume that a profit earned or a gain by a company is 30 percentage. Profit percentage. Then, selling price is 50 rupees. Now we have to find out at what cost the company got the product so therefore the trick is very simple 100 divided by 100 plus gain percentage is 30 into my selling price is 50 so therefore 100 divided by 130 into 50 so if I take out the zeros here, that is 500 divided by 30. So it is around 38.4 rupees. So we have now understood the third trick in the profit and loss. So that means profit percentage is given, selling price is given, we will be asked to calculate the cost prices. Similarly, we have given the last percentage and the selling prices and they ask us to find out what is the cost price. So a small change in the formula that we have used, rather than 100 divided by 100 plus gain percentage, it is 100 divided by 100 minus the last percentage into the selling price. Okay, these are the simple tricks that we are having. We will move to the little top four tricks on the profit and loss. Now, look at the problem given here. If a price of a commodity is decreased by a percentage, then by what percentage consumption should be increased to keep the same price? <coughs> now, look at the trick here. In the examination, they may ask you the price of the steel is decreased by 10 percentage. And what percentage of consumption should be increased? So that the price should be kept you know, you know, to constant. So therefore, the volume is important to us. So how do I find the problems? If a price of the commodity is decreased by a percentage, and then the consumption is increased to be what price so that the, we can have the same price. This is the question in the examination asked. So now, if the okay, price is, so now we need to have a 20 percentage. Okay, if the commodity is decreased by 20 percentage. Then what percentage I have to increase? That is 100 into A divided by 40. That is, by decreasing the price by 20 percentage. So 100 into 20 divided by 40. So that is, we are having 2000 <coughs> divided by 40. So let us take, so that is 50 percentage. So I have to, if I am decreasing the price of the commodity by 20 percentage, my volume should go up by 50 percentage. Then only I can keep the price as it is. So this is a trick. So many times a student will confuse in the PGCT. So they do not understand what is this problem, they are not even this, that, you know, like that. The simple problem is, if the price of a product is decreased by 20 percentage, 
what percentage consumption should be increased to keep the same price? So the trick is 100 into A divided by 40, 100 into say 20 divided by 40 and we are making it 50 percentage. So now we will learn another trick, you know, how we can you know, speed up our calculations in the any quantitative aptitude examination, whether it is a job aptitude examination or a PGCT examinations. Many times you know, they will ask you to find out what is the square root of say some number. So if they ask you to find out what is the square root of say we are having uh, 3229, 3249. So they are asking to find out what is the square root of this number. <coughs> now many times what people will do, they will go with the same formula. They find out you know this. So they go, they were taught like this 3. So 3 ones are 3. So then 0, 8, 3. Once again they go with this 3. Okay. Then 6, 1, like that. They go on doing the problem and wasting the time. But because we don't have a time in the examination. So what's the trick that I'm following here? So let us take the number here, the 9. Now you should remember these of one square. 1 square is equal to 1, 2 square is equal to 4, 3 square is equal to 9, 4 square is equal to 16, 5 square 25, 6 square 36, 7 square 49, 8 square 64, 9 square 18. Now this last number comes here and here. That means this is having the last digit either 3 or 7. So first find out do you get such values in the answer? Say if at all answer is having like 23, so 33, sorry, 37, okay, 41, then D is you know, okay, the 71 like that. So this is an example, not exactly the solution to this. So there is only one three here, that means that will be solution. You can end up and saying that this is an answer and you, know, you can save the time. That is a trick. So many people will understand this. The 9 is the last number, therefore the last number either should be 3 or 7. Like let us take this number. There are 3 plus 2. So 3 and 2 is there. Let us take 3 plus 2, that is 5. You add up another number to this 6, multiply these two, that is 30. So 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 1, 6, 30. Now look at where this number comes. This number comes between our 5 square and 6 square. So now we have one more number that has emerged here. That is, it is 5 and the last digit is 3. So now we have a confusion here. That is, we have taken a 5, we have taken 3 or 7 is there. So either 53 or 57 should be the answer to us in the examination. If at all one is given in the answer, others is not there, you can zero out that and save the time without much calculation. But if at all both were there, so what I have to do? So now this product is scam has a 30. If the product this number is 36, if this number is smaller than this, take always the bigger number, that is 7. But if the number, this number is bigger than this, then I will take the smaller number. In this case, 30 is smaller than the 36, then I will take the 7. So the answer for this 3 to 4 9 is, 57. So 57 is the square root of the 3 to 4 9. Thank you.